Massive solar and wind energy companies have popped up all over the world as a result of our search for affordable, clean energy. When taking into account the eight years prior, investment in these renewable resources totaled $273 billion in 2018, bringing the total amount invested to $2.3 trillion. Most people find this to be good news, but many have wondered why nuclear power was not used. A quick analysis of a nation's carbon dioxide production per kilowatt hour of energy produced reveals that France is now performing better than Germany in the battle to produce low-carbon energy. With nuclear power providing 61% of its electricity, France emits only 32 grams of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour. Germany, a nation that has spent billions on wind energy and is progressively replacing all of its nuclear power facilities with natural gas plants, produces 318 grams of carbon dioxide for every kilowatt hour. It obviously makes sense why others support nuclear energy over renewables. Because wind is intermittent, it needs to be supported by another form of energy production that can quickly ramp up and produce electricity when the wind dies. Natural gas is the ideal solution for that at a fair price. The wind itself emits less carbon dioxide for every kilowatt hour of energy it produces at about 11 grams, just under the nucleus's 12 grams. In actuality, the wind doesn't directly compete with nuclear energy. It does so with larger baseload power plants like natural gas. To understand why wind is losing this war, we must look at the economics of the global nuclear energy protest. Risk, potential profit, and the length of time it would take to see a return on investment are the three most crucial considerations to take into account when deciding where to invest money in infrastructure. A return on investment calculation for two power facilities, a 1000 megawatt nuclear facility, and a 1000 megawatt natural gas plant is shown in this simplified example. This computation is based on the excellent YouTube video posted by the Illinois Energy Professor. The cost of construction, the cost of fuel, and the length of construction are the three largest factors that differ between the two energy sources when we make this kind of comparison. It is difficult to estimate the standard nuclear power plant building cost. From 5,500 to 8,100 per kilowatt, the price varies significantly from project to project. Assuming a lower cost of $6,000 per kilowatt, a nuclear power station with a capacity of 1,000 megawatts would cost $6 billion. Building a 1,000 megawatt power plant would cost $0.92 billion, but let us round that up to $1 billion for simplicity. In contrast, natural gas power plants are among the least expensive to build, costing roughly $920 per kilowatt. Since natural gas is less expensive, it will take the nuclear power plant longer to repay its costs, which I know you already perceive as a concern. Due to the length of time required for each, this race between the hare and the tortoise intensifies. Construction of a typical nuclear power plant takes six years, while natural gas power plants typically take two years. This becomes a particular problem when debt and interest rates are involved. We will assume that both plants will borrow $1 billion in installments over a 25-year period at a 3% interest rate. This means that each plant will make a $6 million annual payment. Here, we will adapt a concept from an Illinois energy professor to demonstrate the relationship between profits and cost. Each full block unit like this represents $5.6 million. Blocks can be partially filled to represent smaller fractions. We are using this to put the enormous sums of money involved on a more human scale. These blocks represent debt below the x-axis, profits above the line, nuclear profit and loss on the left side of the graph, and natural gases on the right. The nuclear power plant borrows another billion in the second year, so now it owes the bank double the repayment, and now it has a total of three units of loss. By contrast, 
natural gas does not borrow another billion, so it only needs to pay off the current one unit of debt per year for a total of two units of loss. It took two years to complete the natural gas plant. We need to calculate the revenue from both of our 1,000 megawatt facilities so that if they both run for an hour, they will each generate 1,000 megawatt hours of energy. However, because the energy market is complex, it is not easy to calculate the revenue from this number. Grid operators may purchase a significant portion of nuclear's baseload out in advance for a fixed price because it can turn itself off easily, while natural gas plants can continue operating after reaching their peak by shutting down at night and only operating during the evening when electricity demand and prices are at their highest. Nuclear power plants must continuously run and electricity prices drop in the middle of the night as demand falls. As a result, it makes sense for nuclear power plants and grid operators to agree on a better price. As a result, they spend less on operating and maintaining their plants and make the most money possible from the fuel that they use. Add in transmission costs as energy is lost through power lines, taxes, and all the other complicated factors, and calculating earnings become even more challenging. This calculation will be inaccurate. The natural gas plant will have a revenue of nine and a quarter of these blocks in its third year after our loan repayment, turning to eight and a quarter block of profits. But there is another significant deduction we need to take into account that significantly varies between these power plants' fuel costs. In our assumption, we will assume that they will both earn the same amount at $525 million a year after all these deductions are made. Nuclear power has one major advantage. Its fuel is relatively inexpensive simply by virtue of needing much less of it than natural gas does. One uranium fuel palace the size of a AAA battery has the capacity to release the same amount of energy as one ton of coal or half a ton of natural gas. To run the 1,000 megawatt facility for an entire year, you would need about $64 million worth of fuel or 1.1 currency blocks. To produce the same amount of electricity with the natural gas facility, you would need about $450 million worth of fuel or 7.9 currency blocks. These prices will also change. However, keep in mind that this calculation is merely hypothetical. Once the nuclear power plant is operational, it can produce electricity for far less money than a natural gas plant which will generate $525 million in revenue. After deducting loan payments and fuel costs, we are left with about one-third of our currency units in profit. In year three, the nuclear power plant borrows another billion, meaning it now owes three units of loan payments. However, removing one-third of the units from the nuclear plant lost year adds another billion lost units, adding four lost units. Natural gas plants remove a further third of units completed and operating, primarily nuclear power plants. Seven-year revenue generation after loan payments and fuel costs equals 2.2 profit units. Leave a full repayment in 24 years. Over the long term, the nuclear power plant is insanely profitable, but the risk involved in achieving the profits is high. The nuclear power plant is currently making far more profit per year, but it still has a long way to go in reversing this loss. Year 7, Year 8, Year 9, Year 10, Year 11, Year 12, Year 13, and here, Year 15, Year 16, the nuclear power plant has now broken even and even made a profit. Year 17, Year 18, Year 19, and Year 20 when six years have passed and only $1.2 billion in loan repayments have been made, investors and politicians alike are afraid to put their money on the line. The company took out another loan to pay for the loan payments because financing these things is difficult, and getting money from politicians is difficult because most politicians aren't going to think about long-term energy strategy because it won't start. Six years later, $1.2 billion in loan repayments have been made with no revenue on the books. 
Before even talking about the safety concerns, nuclear energy just becomes a tremendously tough investment to justify over time, leading to an even larger run into the negative before income begins. Examining these figures, you would never anticipate a nuclear power plant manager choosing to close. And yes, that is a functioning plant down. Exactly what is occurring in numerous locations in the Diablo Canyon power plant, for example. Pacific Gas and Electric operate this power plant in California, which uses a variety of energy-producing sources, including nuclear energy, natural gas, and renewable energy. A corporation that is publicly traded, maximizing making money is their right. And yes, they have chosen to terminate the Diablo when Canyon Nuclear Power Plant opens in 2024. Why would its 40-year license expire? They act in that way. Well, that's difficult in the sequence. They have to renew their license in order to update the facilities as a whole, at a cost they thought was excessive. That they had to transition from a single cooling system through a mechanism that pumps marine water through the cooling facility and discards it into a closed-off sea system that uses evaporative cooling in a cycle. The same amount of water was used continuously, resulting in a lower impact on the environment. Particularly, the cost of integrating was considerable. After the necessary seismic protection learnings from the Fukushima disaster calamity, where a tsunami flooded the area and ruined emergency power systems and caused three distinct meltdowns and as many as three hydrogen explosions. Nuclear supporters want to claim that making nuclear energy is safe, but it can be cost prohibitive. PG and E said that retrofitting was too expensive, so they chose to shut down the plant completely. They determined that it would be more profitable it is reasonable to shut down and replace. This is saying a lot about using renewable energy sources. Economics of nuclear power when even and currently the operating facility is not competitive. Only nuclear energy is struggling. Three hours north of Diablo is a competition. Canyon's gas turbines were decommissioned and a battery storage system in California produces so much because surplus solar power is purchased and put into batteries so that you can sell it afterwards. It makes financial sense. America's energy is a sophisticated machine and no one-size-fits-all strategy is possible. We can see these more clearly as a result. Costs using a technique called LCOE or Levelized Cost of Electricity the goal of levelized cost is to provide a simple comparison of a figure that indicates the price of power. To cover its cost over time, the plant will have to charge a fee per unit of energy. The equation over the length of its lifetime appears to be like this, but to put it simply, the amount of expenses over a plant's lifetime is divided by the overall amount of power that the facility will produce and sell during its history. As we can see, that solar photovoltaic and onshore wind electricity and natural gas with a mixed cycle are the most affordable types of electricity. And for this reason in particular, they are increasing nuclear's market share in order to regain prominence. It must contend with the requirement that the intended natural gas filling be smaller, less expensive and safer. The reactor ought to be deployable, i.e. it can switch on and off by itself. It may easily fit into contemporary layouts with a significant amount of renewable energy. A challenging issue, yet there are folks who are developing potential answers that might increase the viability of nuclear energy. We now have a method for obtaining that energy efficiently. All we need now is a method to satisfy our evening energy requirements, ensuring that people in authority make smart decisions when it comes to this technology. So what's your take on this? Do you think nuclear energy is economically feasible? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity and I'll see you on the next one.